Hey everyone, and welcome back. I'm Anton Retro, and in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to clean your dirty and broken cartridges. So if you want to get back to playing your favorite NES, N64, Game Boy, or even Sega Genesis games, this is the video for you. Just remember that many of these are ideas, and I'm not responsible for anything that happens. Anyways, let's get started. So first, we're going to start off with the NES cartridge. Usually when you put the cartridge in the system, the screen will stay one color, or go black, or just change a bunch of different colors. You may even be able to load the game, but will have the game stop working once you're playing it. And the graphics may get jumbled up too, which can look pretty weird. So if you're running into issues with the cartridge, the best thing to do is get a Q-tip and dip it in some rubbing alcohol. For which one I recommend, let's just say the stronger, the better. So if you have 99%, that'll probably work really well. Now just rub the Q-tip against the pins to clean all the dirt and junk. This is the easiest method, and will pretty much fix most cartridges. You can open up the cartridge if you want a more effective clean, but since you need the specific bit to open it, just cleaning it like this is totally fine. And this bit can easily open up N64, NES, Game Boy, SNES, and many other cartridge types from Nintendo. I will put some in the description as well for you to check out too. And now we can test the game once again and it will load up and work really well. Now for Super Nintendo cartridges, it's pretty much the exact same thing. Just dip the Q-tip, Make sure you get both sides of the pink connectors, wait a bit until it dries, and then pop it in your system and it should work. Once again, N64 cartridges are the exact same, although this time we're going to clean an F-Zero X cartridge and make it look a lot better. So I'm not just going to be covering how to clean the pins, but also the plastic and label also. Once again, rubbing alcohol is your best friend for this. So let's take off this sticker and then get some rubbing alcohol with the Q-tip. You can also let the rubbing alcohol sit if you want to get particularly strong stickers off. And after a bit of cleaning, our cartridge looks really good. A lot better than it did before. Be careful with the stickers and labels. If you get rubbing alcohol, it may damage it. But if it does, you can just get a paper towel and it shouldn't be a problem. But as you can see, it looks really good. And the last thing to do is get rid of the dirt on the pins on the cartridge. And as you can see, that's it. Also, if you have any carts that have an initial written with black marker or just maybe really strong strong residue. You can remove them by using rubbing alcohol, but just remember that not all markers will come off, so do be careful. You may need to use a magic eraser, but do be aware that the plastic finish that's on the cartridge may come off. And if any marker is on the label, then well, you really can't do much about that. You can try and get it off using rubbing alcohol, but it's not recommended. Now moving on to everyone's favorite handheld, the Nintendo Game Boy. Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance cartridges can all be cleaned the exact same way. Although I prefer to take apart the Game Boy Advance cartridges due to them being so small. The Triwing easily gets the screws off. Continuing with the handheld theme, let's take a look at the Nintendo DS cartridge, which is exactly the same as the 3DS. Since the pins are easier to get at, we can just clean them with a Q-tip, but we will have to push down a little bit to get in the creases. It's possible to take them apart, but I don't recommend it, as the glue is what holds the cartridge together, so there are no screws to take apart. And the same can be applied to the Nintendo Switch cartridge as well, which is quite smaller. Now if all fails, that means you will need to take a look at some advanced options. If your cartridge just doesn't read at all, or has weird glitches and errors, then we will need to take a look at the board. For the first option, you can try and read the resistors, and if they are not working, you can try and replace them. You will need to remove the resistor, and then solder the new one back on. If this method does not work, then you can try fluxing the chips. If the chips are not being read, then this could solve the problem. Pretty much, you will need to put a few drops of the flux liquid on the connectors, and then heat them to have a more secure connection. And the final option is not the most recommended, but I will suggest it just because it is like the last thing that you could do, which is to use Brassel to polish the pins and make them look brand new. You don't want to push down very hard when you use this stuff, as that can cause severe damage to the pins, so use this method at your own risk. The cartridge that I showed in this demonstration did not work at all, no matter what I did. So the fluxing did the trick, and now the game works perfectly fine. 
Of course, many of these ideas will work for most cartridges, so even if I didn't mention a specific one, don't think it can't be cleaned the same way. Sometimes you may just have to experiment, and if something doesn't exactly work out, it's not my fault, just remember that these are suggestions. Anyways guys, that's about it for the video. If you did enjoy it, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Did any of these suggestions work out for you? Let me know, and I will see you guys in the next one.